that's where I want to be more options on the trend line because that was on my formula and I put an orange thing around the formula, but that looks nice too. So I'll leave it there. And so I'm going to go to the trend line and the trendy line. If you really want to be trendy, you have to be orange. That's what the end trend is these days. That's the color trend that people are into. So there we have that. And now uh, note that in this case, it's pretty clear that you would think if there's a correlation that the hens would be the causal factor of the eggs. You have a chicken or the eggs problem here. And, you know, at least at, from the farmer's standpoint, you get the hens and then the eggs happen. Doesn't You could do it the other way around, right? You could buy an egg and then get a hen and then, but you would kind of think the hens are the driving factor generally because you're probably going to buy the hens to get the eggs, I would think. But I'm not a farmer. You could, maybe you do it the other way. But you could say, like, if I flip these, I could say, let's let's flip these and we could do that and insert uh another chart and say boom another scatter plot down here and and now i'm just going to flip the x and the y so now i'm going to say that here i want the labels let's add the labels i want the x now to be equal to the eggs and then the y to be the hens so there we have that. Now, how can we flip that here? I've got to go into my data set. So I go into my chart, my select data, and I'm going to edit the data. And this time on the X here, I'm going to delete the X. Be careful because it can be a little tricky here. And this is going to be equal to the uh, Y's, this side now. The X is equal to the Y's or the eggs. All right, so we'll say, okay. And then the Y's are equal to the X's. Wow, that's confusing. The Y's are equal to the X's, okay, which are the hens, okay? So there we have that. And so then we're gonna say, okay, and okay. We still have that positive kind of relationship, but now we flipped it. So so note, you can, you can plot either way, the X or the Y, and you'll get that positive trend line relationship, but it's the general custom to try to put the independent factor on the X, which you would think in this case would be the hens. So I'm gonna, let's put a trend line in this, hit the plus button, trendy line. There's our trendy line. And let's make it trend more trendy. Let's put a equation on it. So there's our equation on the trendy line. Let's make sure I'm back on the trendy line again by going to the options and then the bucket. I'll make the trendy line a solid line and orange. So there we have it. So it looks like there's a relationship. If I go back to the top one, you can see the hens are over here. As the hens go up, we get more eggs. We, we would get more eggs. So, so here's, you know, this first point, uh, we had, what, three hens, and then we got uh, 105 eggs, which makes sense. And then the second point was at five hens, and we got 185 eggs. And then at six hens, we only, we, we only got up to 200 and uh, one egg, so there's some slacker hens, because you would think they would be bringing me up to the trend line here, but got some lazy hens, I guess. And then on the seven line, I mean, laying any eggs is, is hard work. I'm not trying, <laughs> I, I, I don't mean to put down the hen, but in any case, this is the 345, and that brings us up to uh, the three, uh, the 345 with the seven. So that, so that's, okay, that's our trend. So then, Let's do our formula to see what the correlation is going to be. So I'm going to make this one a little bit larger. And then I'll make these smaller so they fit in the space over here. Just to organ just do some housekeeping to organi organize this because the hens are making a mess everywhere and you've got to you've got to get everything organized when you have all these hens running around. So then we're going to say this is going to be, let's copy the data first. I'll just copy this data and I'll paste it over here and let's do our analysis. So I'm going to do the Z score, Z score times the Z score over N minus one. I'll actually do a, an, an added step here just so we can see that first bit a little bit more clear. I'm going to select two columns here, right click and insert. So now I've inserted two columns after the X. I'm going to do the first one, which is going to be the mean, the uh, x minus the mean of each of our data points. 
So I'm going to say this is going to be X minus this, I'll call it just the standard deviation, or you could call it this, you know, the sigma, the X bar, I'm sorry, X minus the mean, which I should say is the X bar. Let's see if we can get fancy with that. I'll put an X, I'll put an X, and then I'll go into the insert, and we'll go into the symbols, and I have my bar over here. It's, I think it's in the Greeks, but I have it in my recently applied area. Let's see if I insert that, if it does what we want. There it is. So you can insert that X bar. If you don't have it down here, you can look for it up top. We, we did that in a prior section, so I won't get into that in detail, but there it is. So now we're going to do that for each of our data points. So I'm just going to be taking then this number three, the first data point minus the mean which is the 5.25. I wanna keep this the same as I copy it down, therefore F4 on the keyboard, making an absolute dollar sign before the E and the two and enter. Let's, let's uh, do some decimals and home tab, number, decimalize it, and then copy it down. So there we have it. And then I'm gonna give the Z score, which means I'm gonna take the result of this one and divide it by the standard deviation. And that's gonna give us basically our Z z of x it's the z score of the x which is going to be equal to this divided by the standard deviation of a sample instead of the population f4 on the keyboard making an absolute dollar sign before the e and the three enter decimalizing it home tab number group decimalize copying it down there we have that let's do the same for the y so we're going to say this is going to be y minus y bar uh, insert symbol there's my bar insert and okay and then i'm gonna i'm gonna copy the formatting of these let's just copy the formatting of all of these cells and then home tab format painter and paste that here the, and it messed up my bar okay that's okay i won't I'm kind of upset with that, but I'm not going to get too upset. So we're going to say this is going to be equal to the 105 minus the 209, which is, of course, the mean F4 in the keyboard, dollar sign before the F and the 2. So we can copy that down and the 209 doesn't move down, enter, and then let's copy it down. Let's do then this one is going to be the Z of x which means we're just going to take this amount divided by the standard deviation so we're going to take this over divided by standard deviation 99.92 f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the f and the three so the 99.92 doesn't move down when we copy it down enter decimalizing it uh didn't i why didn't i decimal home tab number decimalize and copy it down so we'll copy that down. Okay, so there we have that. So now we've done this first bit for each data point, all of the X's minus the mean divided by the standard deviation, which is in essence the Z-score, the Z-score. Now we'll multiply them together, which is the Z, which is the Z of X times, times, which I'll do with an asterisk, the Z of Y, and let's go ahead and home tab font group. We'll make that black, white, center it, wrap it. And there we have it. And then we're going to say this is going to be equal to Z of X times the Z of Y and decimalize it. Home tab number group, decimalize, copy it down. So there we have it. So now we've done this whole top part, except we need to sum it up and then divide and then divide by n the number four of them minus one all right so let's make this blue and bordered before we do that and so i'm going to go bordered